Hey everybody, welcome. Year end update for 2023 here. It's been a long time since I touched base. I figured I'd better let you know what's been going on. So it's been a crazy, crazy busy summer for me, summer and fall, outside trying to get concrete work done, patio work done. I've uh, been doing some renovations on the house as well, trying to get uh, all that water damage fixed up in the kitchen. And that's resulted in basically the layout sort of being neglected over the last few months. I have, however, been purchasing rolling stock. And as you can see here, there's a new unit train that crosses the crow's nest sub. This is the Trinity 31,000 gallon crude oil tanker uh, just recently released by Atlas. Now this is old BLMA tooling and that's the standard that I try to get all my rolling stock to. So these cars are gonna be a perfect fit. I'll have to do almost nothing to them to make them layout ready. I also picked up some of Rapido's 73 foot center beam flat cars. Now I'll be reviewing these cars in the new year. These things look fantastic. I had to do a little bit of tweaking to get the couplers to work properly and I'll go over that in my review when the time comes. I also grabbed some of the 3,230 cubic foot pressure differential uh, covered hoppers that Atlas released. These are going to be a fantastic addition and add some real variety to my cement car fleet. I rode the Canadian from Winnipeg to Toronto at the beginning of November and uh, while I was there I met up with one of my friends from Rapido and he gave me their pre-production sample of the Procore 5820 cubic foot covered hopper to test drive. Now these cars were manufactured beginning in the 70s right up until the 90s and Rapido is going to offer several variations of the car itself. If you're interested pop over to their website and have a look. Now obviously you can't do a review on a pre-production car, but I intend to run the snot out of this thing and see what's going on. And when the production samples show up, look for a full review on those models. Now if you watched the last update video, dishwasher versus layout, you know that I had some water damage due to a leaky dishwasher at the milepost 46.15 area. I'm happy to say that I have had the opportunity to get down and do some restoration. It tracks back in and trains are running. If you're interested in the specifics of the restoration process, I'm doing a multi-part series over on the member side of the channel. This is the progress up to halfway through part four in the series. Now if you compare this rock cut to what it looked like in prior videos, you can see that it's been significantly chopped down. In fact, I took out existing rock work, replaced it with new castings in areas, put in 18 inches of new track, cut down the fascia, and we're now at the stage where celluclay is waiting to dry so I can continue on with coloring and texturing. As SAR 101 leads tonnage westbound up the 1.85% grade, you can see that the new rolling stock is all entrained in the manifest. I like to test the snot out of things before I get carried away weathering them. If things don't run properly, it doesn't matter what they look like in my mind. So these cars will be put through their paces before they earn a place on the layout. Now, as I mentioned before, the Trinity 31,000 gallon crude oil tank cars that Atlas released are old BLMA cars. Now, every car that I have on the layout runs on BLMA trucks and wheels. These cars have those exact same trucks and wheels. They have the same body mount couplers that I like to use. These cars are a perfect fit. I've run this train extensively over the layout over the past several weeks, putting on at least two real miles. Configured as you see here, 48 cars long with a DPU on the tail end with zero problems. I'm really excited about getting this train weathered up and into revenue service. Now crude oil trains didn't show up in Alberta in my time frame, but I might have to jump my air a little bit just because this is such a cool looking train. I'm also looking forward to Cato coming out with another run of CP AC 4400s and some KCS units as well. I'm going to mix and match those up on this train, really add some interest to the layout. There's still two or three more months of winter that's going to keep me in the basement at the beginning of 2024. I'm going to get the milepost 46.15 restoration all taken care of. And I'm thinking I'm probably going to go in and do a lot of modification to the scenery on the upper level here. I'm going to add a splash of color, get some of my fall aspens up into this area. I'm also hoping to get some work done along Crow's Nest Lake from the Highway 3 overpass to the Summit Lime Works. I've got a big track relocation project in mind as well, but we'll touch base with that in the new year once I get things finalized. So renovations around the house and construction projects outside certainly did cut into the uh, modeling that I got done in 2023. And I want to thank you guys all for your patience and your understanding in realizing that sometimes life gets in the way of the things that we really, really want to be doing here. So of course, work does come before play, but I got enough done here that I can really start focusing back on the layout here. 
So if you like what you see here, by all means, hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and follow along from time to time with progress. And if you really want to get involved with what's going on, consider becoming a channel member where I cover everything from scenery techniques, this new restoration project, locomotive projects, uh, freight car modifications, etc., etc. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. Happy New Year. We'll see you soon.